Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and this is an interview with uh, Steve Jobs from Heaven. Uh, Steve Jobs passed away of cancer, I believe, in October 2011. And uh, uh, his sister at the time wrote an eulogy uh, for the New York Times, and she said that uh, Steve uh, came out of consciousness at the end and said three words, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. And uh, it's uh, my understanding uh, that Steve had been to heaven at that time. I've talked to uh, Jesus and uh, Steve was taken and shown heaven and uh, Jesus introduced himself to him and um, asked him if he wanted to give his life to him and spend his life in heaven when he died. And uh, Steve was uh, fresh from coming back from heaven when he said those words uh, that his sister heard. Uh, so the oh wow was what he'd seen in heaven. Um, and so we're going to start this interview. And I'll start with uh, question number one and uh, go uh, on to question 18. Um, I'll probably do this in more than one session. Um, and uh, so uh, this will be the course of the book uh, with uh, what I have to say. Um, so uh, we'll start with question number one. Question number one is, can you tell me how we met? So Steve says, um, you were uh, fascinated about my life and uh, you uh, uh, ordered an audio book about my life um, and listened to it and uh, was quite happy uh, with the audio book. And later on, uh, you're watching a documentary on my life. You're sitting up in bed with your laptop watching the documentary and you felt a presence come into the room and uh, uh, Matthew um, can sense a spiritual presence when it arrives and he asked Jesus who it was and Jesus said it was me. And so he assumed that I'd made it to heaven because someone from hell uh, can't uh, come back to earth. Um, and so um, he, he, uh, he understood it was me and we started watching the documentary together and the people uh, were being um, very um, honest about how obnoxious I was and how... Um, I treated people harshly and uh, how I had an inner circle, unless you're part of the inner circle, you weren't treated that well. And my attitudes uh, towards uh, people, um, and uh, it was an interview with people who knew me well and uh, documentary interviewed people who knew me well and uh, being quite outspoken about what sort of person I was. And uh, I remember you saying, Matthew, that they're treating you quite harsh here. And uh, I'd been in heaven for a while and uh, I was able to say I wasn't a very nice person, Matthew, uh, when I lived. Um, and that was quite a surprise to you. Um, but uh, you come to realize that uh, as good as I was at my work, um, I, I could have had uh, better social skills with people and uh, you come to love me for who I was, um, but uh, I was a new person in heaven. So uh, uh, I, uh, I, I met and talked to you then. Uh, back then uh, you did a couple of interviews with me, but you weren't happy with them and uh, you uh, deleted them off your YouTube um, uh, 
videos. Uh, but since then, uh, we've spoken and uh, you've been to my house in heaven. Um, one time uh, you had a vision of uh, my house in heaven. You were talking to a friend that was a prophet. And you and your friend visited my house in heaven. And you saw a sofa, a lounge suite, and uh, a waterfall uh, falling through my roof uh, in the living room. And uh, you could hear the waterfall. And uh, I was uh, talking to you with an, uh, what uh, looked like an iPad on, on my knees. And uh, we had a discussion there. And uh, from time to time, we've spoken and You've come to know me in a little way. Uh, and uh, in the last couple of days, uh, what led up to this um, is uh, you're visiting heaven uh, and uh, you're in your house and uh, you got introduced to me by your scribe angel. And uh, she was able to tell you that it was time uh, for the Steve Jobs interview, um, your scribe angel always uh, tells you what uh, book uh, you're going to do next. And uh, this, uh, you'd had a rest uh, for a while uh, from producing books and just editing three or four books. And uh, now um, you're at the stage of producing a new book and this has uh, become your new book. And so uh, we've talked over the last couple of days and we've had conversations. And uh, today uh, you, uh, you were led uh, to Michael Jackson Speaks from Heaven, book one. And uh, you got uh, the questions for this interview out of uh, that book because uh, you're quite aware that there would be many people uh, reading this book that don't profess to be Christians and uh, don't uh, live a life as a Christian. So you wanted to go back to the Michael Jackson questions uh, to have uh, questions that are more suitable to people that may not uh, be a Christian. So this is where we are. So uh, that's the answer to question one. So it's Matthew speaking. So question two, how do you feel about being here today? Uh, this is Steve speaking. I really uh, feel uh, joyful uh, being here. I'm uh, really relaxed. Uh, I've got uh, quite a bit to say. And uh, it's been years. Uh, it was about five or six years ago that uh, you were thinking of interviewing me um, and you did interview me and uh, it's been a break and I've had uh, five or six more years in heaven and uh, um, I'm uh, quite relaxed and happy and uh, joyful uh, to be here. Your a great person to watch and interact with. Um, you're so open, um, yeah, so easy to um, spend time with. Um, and it's uh, often great uh, just to watch you from heaven and watch you uh, go about your life. Uh, at present, uh, you're in a lockdown from COVID and you're not really going out much. You're not allowed to go out much. And uh, so this is a welcome distraction to you, but um, I'm aware that uh, you're quite tired and uh, you've entered into a season of sleeping a lot. And so this will be a challenge uh, to uh, record a couple of hours uh, interview uh, from uh, me 
but uh, I'm uh, confident that you've done it uh, many times before and uh, heaven is confident uh, that uh, you'll be able to achieve uh, what uh, needs to be achieved and uh, I've uh, spent enough time in heaven uh, to have information uh, that uh, can uh, readily supply uh, the listeners and the readers with enough uh, information uh, to fill a book and fill a couple of videos uh, with exciting information. I'm, uh, I'm surprised that uh, you had the uh, uh, courage uh, to get the questions today and uh, prepare yourself uh, for this interview today. Um, it was put on your radar a couple of days ago, but it wasn't until uh, about an hour ago that the Holy Spirit inspired you to do the interview tonight. And here we are doing the interview. And I have to say, I am impressed. I'm, I'm not one of the people that watch you all the time, not like other saints who watch your life all the time. And I'm quite surprised at uh, your ability to hear the Holy Spirit and obey the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is um, the spiritual part of God. It's just the spirit and uh, gives directions to a Christian. And uh, Matthew was able to take those directions and open up uh, his Zoom recording and start to record a video, which uh, will become a book. So, um, uh, so uh, I feel really good um, and uh, I'm happy about uh, this interview so far. Question number three, this is Matthew, question number three, what is heaven really like? This is Steve. Well, uh, coming up uh, in October uh, 2021, I will have been in heaven for 10 years and um, 10 years is like uh, 200 years in earth time. Uh, Matthew uh, found out um, some uh, a year ago that uh, one day in earth time is about three weeks in heaven time. And so um, in heaven's days, I've probably been in heaven about 200 years. Um, so you can imagine I know a lot about the Christian faith and I've got a lot of knowledge about heaven being there for so long. But even in 10 years in earth time, could you imagine having uh, no uh, lack of income and uh, being given the opportunity to experience the world uh, with unlimited income? Uh, you can travel wherever you want to go. Uh, you can experience any sort of food. You can buy any sort of clothes. Uh, you can travel in any sort of cars. You can go to any sort of monuments and buildings. Imagine on Earth being given unlimited money just to experience Earth and enjoy it. Um, that's uh, similar to what I've been given in heaven. Uh, we have the ability to travel and experience uh, the cultures uh, of heaven, uh, the different foods, uh, the different entertainment, uh, the different cars, the different clothes, the different experiences. Um, and uh, heaven uh, is, uh, is a remarkable place. Um, first of all, I'd like to say uh, in heaven, there's no judgment. You're not judged uh, for, who, for who you are. 
uh, everyone has redeeming characteristics in heaven and people don't judge each other. There's no jealousy in heaven. Uh, there's no envy in heaven. There's no rudeness in heaven. All negative emotions don't exist in heaven. And so you can imagine if you become uh, really skilled at a certain thing, like I was uh, uh, with creating, um, if you become really skilled at creating and create uh, wonderful things in heaven, no one gets jealous about it. No one is envious about it. No one gives you a bad rap, but uh, you only get praise and uh, edification of other people. And so the whole environment is different uh, to earth. Uh, people's opinions uh, are different. People uh, uh, have, um, ha have uh, positive things to say and uh, say uh, react uh, positively. Um, in heaven, you can uh, walk down the street and uh, know another person. You can see another person and know things about them. Um, Jesus, uh, when he was on earth, had the ability to be able to tell what a person was like uh, just from one glance, and it's a higher level of understanding. Uh, certain prophets can do it too, uh, or uh, people in the dark arts, clairvoyants and psychics have got that ability just to know things about people. Well, in heaven, everyone's got that ability, so... You can meet a person on the street and uh, they can um, be known to you. And um, another thing uh, that heaven has got is uh, it's got movie screens where you can watch a person's life on a movie screen. If it's a person that of significance to earth, the whole of heaven may watch a movie of the person's life, but uh, you can watch a person's life at like a drive-in theatre with other people, or you can just watch it on your own iPad, a movie, and they've got a documentary about a person's life and their past and everything they've done. And you can watch like a 12-hour film about Matthew's life and I've done that and I understand Matthew uh, really well. I've uh, watched not only a movie about his past, but I've watched a movie about his future. And uh, you can learn uh, quite a bit about a person and uh, you can uh, do the same with uh, characters out of the Bible. You can pick a character uh, Perhaps King David is someone uh, that uh, you're interested in, a former king of Israel um, that's uh, mentioned in the Bible. Um, and you can uh, be interested in King David. So you can uh, watch a film, a 12-hour film about King David's life. And... Uh, you can have a coffee in heaven, but uh, you don't get tired in heaven, uh, so you don't need coffee to stay awake. Um, but uh, you can watch a 12-hour film, and it can go into all the good things and all the bad things King David did, and you can get a real understanding on uh, a person's life. Perhaps you've got a meeting with King David, and you're going to do some sort of transaction or some sort of business with him in heaven. And it's important that you know him uh, really well. And you can watch uh, a film about uh, his life on earth. And then you can watch a 12 hour film about what he's achieved in heaven since he's been to heaven. Then you can have a total feeling about who you're going to deal with. Imagine on earth if you're going to do a business deal uh, an important business deal with a person imagine being able to watch 
a 12 hour documentary about that person's life, all the good and bad things that they've done um, and, uh, and form an opinion about whether you really want to do business with them. So um, there's, there's a famous teacher called Kat Kerr um, and uh, she's been to heaven uh, many times and uh, she uh, teaches that uh, things in heaven are free and that's right. Um, your, your house is free or, or, or Jesus described as mansions are free. Um, you don't have to pay rent, you don't have to pay a mortgage. Um, your, your mansion is, um, is uh, decorated uh, the way that you would uh, decorate your mansion. Um, it's, uh, it's like, well, it is like, it's, it's exactly like uh, you would envisage your dream home. And uh, when you get here, it's de decorated uh, the way that uh, is just wild. And in uh, my mansion, uh, in the living room, and Matthew's only seen the living room, in the living room, it's got a waterfall that comes through the roof and falls and makes a whooshing sound in the living room. And it's just a fresh breeze blows through and uh, there's just like a hazy, uh, hazy mist that's uh, in the living room because of the water falling. Um, but uh, your, your mansion doesn't cost any money. Um, you have no bills, you have no power bills. You have no phone bills. Uh, people have got uh, similar technology to mobile phones and iPads. Um, people um, don't have any internet charges or internet bills. There's no bills in heaven. There's never an exchange of money. There, there is no money in heaven. Um, you, you understand that the Democrats want to make everything free want to make society free and tax the rich and uh, universities and study and everything is free in heaven. And uh, people do uh, jobs in heaven that they love. Um, and uh, uh, everyone is doing what they love and everyone gets the opportunity to train uh, to become what they want to do. So they may have been on earth and learned to be a baker um, and uh, learn to bake bread. But when they get to heaven, they may bake uh, for a couple of years, but they may have, a male may have wanted to become a florist or he may have wanted to become a musician um, but he never had the time. He was busy getting up at two o'clock in the morning and baking bread every day. And he raised a family, but he never got the time to be a florist or a musician. And in heaven, he may bake for a couple of years and learn to be a musician and go off and become a musician or a florist. So uh, people progress in heaven uh, to do jobs that... Uh, that are outside of themselves, um, jobs that their spirit really wants to do, like their soul, the, the, the essence of who they are, who they really want to become. And you'll find that the baker, when he goes off and becomes a musician or uh, when he um, goes off and becomes a florist, you'll find that he's an outstanding florist or he's an outstanding musician because that's what his spirit really wanted to do. And uh, it was just his father was a baker and he trained to be a baker to support his family. But now that uh, heaven doesn't have uh, demands on your money and uh, you can... Uh, go to a trade school and learn how to do something and you don't have to pay rent and pay bills 
you can uh, learn to do things in heaven and then start to do them as your profession. Everyone works in heaven. Um, some people's idea of heaven, some Christians' ideas of heaven is that uh, people are going to um, just uh, stay in the throne room all day long and sing worship to God and sing praises to God. And uh, while there be a measure of that happening in your life as a Christian, that's not your whole life. Everyone works. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, if a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. And, uh, but some people's uh, work, you wouldn't consider as work. Like someone who is an actor, um, uh, it seems like fun, but acting on earth it involves a lot of time sitting by and waiting for the next shot to be set up and there's a lot of downtime in film acting is a very hard job but you may uh, think that acting is is just fun to do um, so there's uh, fun jobs to do in heaven and uh, but there's menial jobs too uh, but uh, people who like menial jobs will do those jobs um, uh, Matthew was talking to a person, uh, he doesn't remember who it was, uh, but uh, um, yeah, he, he was talking to someone who, who had a relative who was a server in heaven, who was a waitress and used to serve uh, at big functions in heaven. And uh, the person liked to meet famous people out of the Bible and she's constantly put at tables to serve with famous people and uh, she got to uh, inter interact with them and she had her own catering firm where she did private parties in people's houses in heaven and uh, she had her own cards and when she served a person at a table in heaven and uh, happy with her uh, she got to do gigs at their house and do private functions for some of the uh, most famous people in heaven. And this is what this person's relative was doing in heaven. And the relative was really happy to hear that. Um, and uh, in that encounter, Matthew introduced them to the relative and they were able to speak uh, back and forth to the relatives through Matthew. And um, man, many people may consider that Matthew uh, being a medium and uh, Matthew even bringing my voice uh, from heaven, you may uh, think uh, is, is acting in a way of witchcraft. Matthew hasn't uh, done a spell or conjured anything up. Uh, to get my voice on uh, in his house and standing behind him and speaking through him. Um, Jesus spoke to Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration and they encouraged him. It's quite natural to be able to uh, speak to a saint from heaven. So um, some people may have take issue with that and... Uh, but that's okay. So heaven, um, heaven actually conforms to your reality. Like um, an artist in heaven can um, paint a landscape, painting a, a picture where they're painting um, a scene out of heaven, um, and uh, the the actual place that they paint can be created in heaven as they paint. Uh, they can uh, paint a painting of a couple of hills and a stream and then be taken to an angel to a place that's just been created in heaven, which is a couple of hills and a stream and a little shack. Um, and so um, heaven, heaven um, conforms to your reality. So it... Um, everyone's experience of heaven is different 
depending on uh, who they are. So if uh, you've read people's books about heaven and they differ slightly, that really depends on uh, who the person is that's visiting heaven. Some things are important uh, to certain people. Matthew's not really affected much by fragrance. Uh, and so uh, he's been to heaven multiple times and he's seeing heaven as we explain heaven here. But uh, some people who've been to heaven explain that the flowers are really fragrant in heaven. And when you walk through uh, parks in heaven, it, you, you don't even seem to step on the flowers. The flowers seem to spring back and they don't get crushed under your thing. And uh, the fragrances in heaven are really bright and the colours are really bright. Matthew hasn't really experienced that in heaven. He's walked through parks, but he hasn't experienced the flowers uh, springing back and stuff. So um, it just depends on who you are, but um, heaven will mould itself according to your desires and according to what you uh, expect and uh, want and desire. It's... Uh, and, and in some ways, the earth will do that too. There's certain substance in um, the fact that we get what we desire, the good and the bad. Uh, so um, uh, there's uh, many... Uh, many uh, facets of heaven there's there's uh, the throne room which is where god uh, is and where jesus is on the throne some of the time not all the time is god on the throne um, god appears in courtrooms and does uh, different decisions in different places at once and um, god's in the throne room and god walks around heaven and uh, interacts with his people like any king should. Um, and uh, so uh, the throne room is a good experience and uh, the music is uh, wonderful and it's at another level. And uh, the worship is amazing. Uh, and, uh, but um, there's, uh, there's the crystal sea, which is a sea, which is, you could say, an ocean. And uh, there's streams and rivers and there's waterfalls and forests and deserts. And uh, uh, heaven is very expansive. And uh, you could spend your whole 10 years uh, just looking at different facets of heaven and not really even working. So... Heaven, uh, Matthew's mother said to him uh, recently, uh, Matthew's mother's in heaven, she said to him recently that heaven is a hundred times better than earth. Um, and uh, she was pleased that she's dead and she's pleased that she's in heaven and she wouldn't want to come back to earth and she doesn't even think about earth anymore except for thinking of her children. And, uh, and so um, I have to say that heaven is uh, a really uh, good experience. It's a really encouraging uh, place to be. And uh, I wish that every person would uh, um, come to heaven and uh, be introduced uh, to the life of heaven. So, um, question number five, uh, Matthew speaking, uh, do all people go to heaven? Sadly, uh, sadly, the, the, uh, this is Steve speaking, the answer to that question is no, not all people go to heaven. Uh, 
Um, some people believe that you have to be a murderer or a pedophile not to go to heaven. But even pedophiles can be forgiven and murderers can be forgiven through uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the sin that is forgiven through his blood. Uh, Jesus died for a reason, uh, to save uh, sinners, to save people. And uh, people need to uh, give their lives to Jesus and follow Jesus. Uh, he's like the doorway to heaven. And uh, that was true for me too. Um, there was many Christians in the world praying for me. And I had, um, Matthew believed I had a Buddhist sort of faith. Um, but I uh, had a lot of Christians praying for me. And on my deathbed, Jesus introduced himself to me and asked me if I wanted to be part of his kingdom. And I was shown heaven and taken for a tour of heaven. And uh, that's what I said to my sister, wow, wow, wow. And I went into the arms of Jesus when I died. Um, so um, I would wish that it could be someone else. Like I wish that you could just say you believe in God and that's enough. Um, you can believe that you want to be an astronaut, but you still have to go. Uh, and do tests at NASA and go through training to go to space. Um, you can believe uh, that you'll win the lotto, but you've got to actually buy a lotto ticket uh, every week until you win, uh, if you ever do win. Um, so um, it's one thing to believe in God. It's another thing to behave like. Uh, your God's son. And uh, so um, there'll be a prayer at the end of this book uh, that you can pray uh, to give your life to Jesus. And uh, Matthew has uh, 70 books about living the Christian faith. And uh, you can read uh, some of those books and that'll help you uh, develop your Christian faith but um, essentially, um, you want to uh, give your life to Jesus and live a life typical of what Jesus taught people to do. I'll admit that there's a lot of closed-minded Christians, a lot of uh, rude Christians, a lot of Christians that are not like Christ. And uh, I can understand that um, you may not uh, want to uh, become a Christian uh, to go to heaven. But I suggest to you that uh, giving your life to Jesus, even being a silent Christian, uh, is, uh, is more beneficial to you than you know and uh, as Jesus had uh, 50 commands uh, 50 commands commandments and uh, it's good uh, if you gave your life to Jesus and uh, had the power come on you from the Holy Spirit uh, for you able to be able to uh, live your life and live your life um, like Jesus did um, by practicing his 50 commands. And if you look up the 50 commands of Jesus uh, on Google, you'll find that, um, that uh, they, they're difficult to obey without having the uh, empowerment of God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, to help you uh, do those things. Matthew's got a book called The Narrow Way, The 50 Commandments of Jesus Made Simple. Uh, 50 Commandments of Jesus are devotional. Um, and uh, that explains the 50 commands of Jesus. Um, so not everyone... Uh, 
uh, on earth uh, goes to heaven. Uh, uh, there's uh, there's decisions made by God um, that um, are different to what some people may believe, but uh, but uh, if you honestly, sincerely uh, desire to go to heaven, um, the best and surest way to get there is to give your life to Jesus and follow in his footsteps, even if uh, you don't uh, practice by going to church. Um, it's just suggested because um, it's like, a, like an ember in a fire. If an ember's in a fire, it's full of heat, but if it falls out of the fire um, and is out by its own, it loses heat and it's not red hot. And uh, you being a Christian outside of fellowship with other Christians, it's like that ember all by itself. And uh, so I recommend that uh, you find a good church and if you pray that prayer at the end, get in touch with Matthew and he'll help you find a church. So that's uh, what I have to say about that. Question number, Matthew speaking, question number six. What is the message you have to the people that loved you? So I want to uh, I want to say to uh, the people who uh, loved me. Um, firstly, I want to um, speak encouragement to all the workers at Apple and Pixar and. Um, I want to encourage you that uh, you're doing a good job and uh, I'm proud of you. And uh, I've uh, been able to watch the progress of Apple and the progress of Pixar, Disney Pixar. And uh, I'm um, impressed with what you're doing. Um, I, I truly, um, I, I, I was, uh, quite introspective. Matthew doesn't know a lot about my life, but um, I was a, a little bit of a private person and uh, Matthew doesn't uh, have much history in, um, in what uh, my faith was, but uh, I want to assure you that heaven is a real place and um, a lot of the people in heaven that I've met were former Christians and uh, before they came to heaven and it seems the surest bet. Um, and I want to say to those people that love and respect me that there's a way to be an authentic, beautiful Christian and uh, not be a bad person. Um, uh, Matthew uh, often says that uh, Christians in people in America and Australia, where he comes from, have got the choice between being a hypocrite or going to hell. And many people look at Christians and the Christian church as a bunch of hypocrites that say one thing and do another. Well, that's true in many instances. But you can be the person that does say things and carries through on those things. And you'll find uh, in Matthew's uh, 70 books that he mentions the 50 commands of Jesus often and he practices them himself and he's authentic. And uh, there's nothing wrong with being an authentic Christian. But uh, I want to uh, encourage you that this is the place uh, this is the place you want to end up. This, uh, this uh, heaven is, is the place that you want to end up. And there's so many benefits on earth uh, to knowing Christ, uh, having a relationship 
with your creator is is a good thing uh, being able to speak back and forth to your creator each day being directed and guided by him um, it's uh, like having your own life coach and uh, Matthew lives uh, a very um, very productive life and uh, one that's filled with richness and uh, your life can be that way too. I want to encourage you to um, be good to others, um, be kind to your families. Um, remember that um, I was uh, a very um, focused man and uh, I had uh, hard, rules and uh some of you who who read this who were offended by me or um treated uh bad by me that i love your forgiveness um i was uh, just doing the best i could with what i had uh, i realized that i wasn't the nicest person and uh, i hope uh, that uh, you can find it in your heart to forgive me uh, for the person that i was um, I'd do a few things differently now if I came back to Earth. Um, if you admire me, if you never knew me personally, but you admire me as the creator of Apple um, and the CEO of Apple, um, I uh, respect you and uh, keep on buying Apple products and uh, uh, keep the brand uh, going um, and uh, I, uh, I'm happy uh, for your respect and your love. Um, I'm happy that uh, I created something that's lasting, that's a strong brand and uh, I, um, I I desire to see uh, Apple prosper and uh, I desire more for uh, people who uh, read this book to pass it on to their friends, and pass it on to other people. Um, I'd really like to impress upon people that um, the Christian life is, is the life and I've only known the Christian life since I've been in heaven. I've only lived the Christian life since I've been here in heaven. But uh, I can assure you that knowing Jesus is an amazing thing and being directed each day by um, the voice of the Holy Spirit is an amazing thing, one that um, never ceases to satisfy me. Question, so this is Matthew, question seven. What is uh, your message to your sister Mona? Uh, this is, uh, this is Matthew. I first found out about Mona when she wrote um, the eulogy for Steve. I read that uh, six uh, years ago, maybe 10 years ago. Um, and I don't know anything about her. I don't think she's mentioned in Steve's book, the book about Steve. So I don't know anything about Mona. And so um, Steve obviously knows his sister. And uh, she said in the eulogy that she'd known him for 27 years, so he knows her very well. But um, if uh, Mona gets to read this, just understand that um, I'm taking it by faith that Steve knows what he's going to say to you. And uh, if it's personal, um, well, he knows it's personal because I don't know anything about you. So Steve says... Hi, Mona. Uh, I, um, I deeply love you and I've been very happy um, 
to um, to be in heaven. Um, I've visited you in a couple of dreams uh, in in the past since I passed, and you remembered me in dreams. And uh, I uh, I dearly love to see you in heaven one day, and uh, I um, pray for you. Um, I pray uh, for your success and uh, your happiness. I guess I just want everyone that I love to come to heaven. And I guess that's what I want for you. Um, I want uh, you to um, pass on my love uh, to my wife and my children and uh, pass on uh, the fact that uh, I, um, I dearly love each of my children and my wife and, uh, and you've got such a good way with words uh, that uh, I trust that you'd be able to pass on my love. One uh, difficulty is uh, Matthew doesn't know anything about them and so it's harder for me to convey information about people he doesn't know, uh, if you understand that. I, um, I've been um, doing uh, some pretty good things in heaven, and uh, we'll get to that later in the book. Uh, but um, I just want to know uh, you to know that I'm proud of you. I always was proud of you and proud of what you've achieved. And I'm proud of what you've achieved in the last 10 years. And uh, I've, I've been given the ability to watch your life and I watch over your life and I pray for your life. Uh, sometimes you've actually felt me near you and felt me uh, looking over your shoulder and I have been. And um, I really love and cherish you. So um, that's the end of part one. So uh, if you like this uh, video, um, uh, press like. Uh, if you want to comment, please comment and uh, give me some feedback uh, if uh, you want to give me some feedback. God bless.